Randy, that's just to show you what future conversations with Watson are going to be like. Well, good morning. It is great to see you guys. Some of you need to tell your face you're awake, but other than that, man, I saw people singing, praise the Lord. Let's try this one, see if you guys can do it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Not bad. Okay, you're awake. That's good. Uh, you ever done something really embarrassing? It's pretty much my lifestyle. It's, uh, so I went to a, a Presby- was it Presbyterian? I think it was either Presbyterian or Lutheran funeral last week for a veteran. Awesome veteran. Totally quiet. You know, they did organ music, and then it'd get real quiet, and, um, you know, different people shared, and it was, it was quieter than that video. That video was pretty quiet, but you guys were even quieter than the video. It was like really silent. And Kristen had just got me this watch for Christmas, and it came late, so the first time I wore it anywhere was to the funeral. And in the middle of the funeral, I like Mickey Mouse, so I've got the Mickey Mouse thing on my watch, and in the middle of the funeral, I touched my watch, and Mickey Mouse announced the time to everyone in the funeral. It's 11.20! Everywhere. And... Afterwards, people said, that was your watch, wasn't it? So uh, what was I going to say? No. So I would love to tell you that's the most embarrassing thing I've done. It's not. And uh, today I I I had heard this story years ago. Today we're going to talk about investing your life. I had heard this story years ago, and and I like it. I think it's a great story, and maybe you've heard it already. And if you have, that's okay. Just hold the secret to the end. But uh, a lady goes to the airport getting ready for a flight, and she decides she's a little hungry, so she goes into the little bookstore there, gets a book, and buys a sleeve of cookies. I didn't have a sleeve of cookies. Girl Scouts have not come to my house yet, uh, but it won't be long, and they'll be in the freezer, and they'll last the year. But uh, you can just pretend this is a sleeve of cookies. So she goes in, she gets a sleeve of cookies, and she sits down on the bench at the airport with her book, and she sets her cookies next to her, and she starts reading her book, man comes and sits right next to her, no big deal. She's reading, and all of a sudden she hears this man rustling into her cookies. And she looks over, and he looks at her, picks up a cookie, and puts it in his mouth, to which she's like furious, like, oh my goodness, this guy is eating my cookies. And she's trying not to get mad, but she's thinking, What in the world? And she waits a minute. Here's rustling again. He's got a second cookie. So now she's aggravated. So he grabs a second cookie. Well, she says, forget that, and grabs a cookie, looks at him and goes, and eats a cookie. The man looks at her. He takes the second to last cookie. She can't believe it. He's looking at her just eating her cookies. And he's like, what in the world? And sure enough, there's one cookie left. And she's thinking, surely he will not take my last cookie. And sure enough, he reached in the bag. He's got her last cookie. She looks over, glares at him. He breaks the cookie in half and eats half of her cookie and walks off. She is livid as she eats her last half of a cookie, thinking, I got a cookie and a half out of my whole sleeve of cookies that I bought. And then they call for her flight, and she opens her purse to put her book back, and as she looks down, her sleeve of cookies is in her purse. (laughs) Figuring it out. Robert, we give you about five more minutes. You'll catch that? Okay. (laughs) Now, let me tell you the truth about life. You have two kinds of cookies in life. You have time and you have money. And you will exchange one for the other. And if you're not a believer, this message probably just, it's okay. But here's what I want you to know. The cookies you've been given, you've been given. They're not yours. And none of us know how much time we have left. And most of us don't know how much money we have left, if we're honest. 
But the truth is we only have two things to invest in life, time and money. And, and here's the big deal. If you want to nap the rest of the sermon, it's okay. But here's what I want you to know. If you recognize that God's the one who's given you what you have, and you ask him, God, how do you want me to use this? You will find more joy in each cookie. But if you're constantly saying, God took another one of my cookies, then you're just going to be aggravated all the time. And so today we're going to look at three principles, and I'm going to read you a story that last night my mom even said, I have never heard a preacher talk about that story. And I know why, because it's Jesus praising a guy for doing something illegal, which really kind of freaks us out a little bit. But the point of the story is really good. So we're going to read it. We're going to look here in Scripture and read it. And then we're going to talk about investing your life. Or we can talk about whose cookies are you eating. So here's the first point today. Let's learn how to use money, not let money use you. Now, Jesus has talked about a coin, he's talked about a sheep, and then he's talked about a prodigal son, and you guys know that story. Everybody's like, we know that one. We saw there's a Rembrandt or something that has that one, so we've read that one. We've seen about that one. Shakespeare mentions the prodigal son, so we know about that one. And now Jesus goes into this story, which no pastor talks about in church, except for me. So here we go. And it's Luke chapter 16. And Luke, the first two verses we're not going to read. Basically, the guy's going to lose his job. His boss comes to him and says, you haven't been doing things right with my money. You've been wasting it. And so you're going to lose your job. And so here's what the guy says. The manager, not the boss, the manager said to himself, what shall I do now? And I love the honesty here. My master is taking away my job. I am not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. And by the way, the older we get, the more we recognize those two things, right? I'm not strong enough to, I'm not ashamed to beg. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. Now, this is where the story gets a little wackadoo for us. So he called each one of his master's debtor. So he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil. He replied, time out. I don't know if you have been to the grocery store lately. How many of you ever buy olive oil? Yeah, you could buy Popeye's wife cheaper. So Popeye's wife's name was olive oil. Of course, he said, I'll give oil. Okay, so, so, but this is an extraordinary amount. This, some people say, was like nine years of wages or more. Can you imagine you meet with somebody and listen to what he does? So he says, take your bill for 900 and make it 450. He cut it in half, gave this guy half off. Then he asked the second, how much do you owe? Now, I don't know if he didn't like the second guy as much, but here's what happens next. A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied, which was much less valuable, by the way. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. So he gave him 20% off. Now, listen to what, this is where it really gets weird. Listen to the next sentence. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. Wait a minute, the boss said, way to go? I guess he's like, well, he's getting fired anyway. I might as well like what he did. Here's the thing. This manager was looking after his own interests first, right? And he was saying, I'm going to do what's going to help me. And if I forgive these guys' debts, not only will they maybe like me, number two, now I'm holding something over them. Now we're in cahoots together. We're criminals together. We've both done the thing. But it says the master knew this happened and said, good job, way to go. Why? Because here's what it says next. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than the people of the light. What's Jesus saying with that sentence? He's saying oftentimes the people of this world 
understand selfish motives. So they sometimes make better decisions when it comes to business affairs. Have, beware of fish on workers' cars. That's what my friends used to say. Just because they're a Christian doesn't mean they're good business people. Did I say that out loud? Should I keep that one inside? By the way, if you have a fish on your car, that's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. But that doesn't make you a better business person necessarily. It might make you worse. According to this verse. Why? Even though this guy did it for selfish means, he did the smart thing. But then it continues, because what point is Jesus making? Do something illegal? Is that his point? Do you really think that? Well, let's keep going and see. For the people of the world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind of people like. And then he says this, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself, so when it's gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. All right, now we get to the point. You mean I should buy my friends, Jesus? Is that what you mean? No. Here's the deal. When you understand that these are not your cookies, and you understand that God pays attention. By the way, we know that God pays attention to what people give because there's actually a story about a centurion where uh, one of the disciples shows up and says, God has seen your gifts to the poor which is a crazy statement. It means God, even, if, even non-Christians, God pays attention to what they do to help other people. That is a crazy verse in Scripture. So here's the deal. If you are always trying to hang on to what you have, if you are always trying to get what's best for you all the time, and you're not going out of your way to bless anyone, you are going to be miserable. But when you recognize that you can help other people find their way home to Christ, when you recognize that you can use a cookie you have today to help someone else find their way home to heaven, then you're really using what God has given you for the best. And so obviously Jesus is not saying, yep, go and steal from your employer. The employers here are like, thank you, Eric, that you didn't say that. What is he saying? He's saying, use what you've been given to bless other people. Because here's the deal. You can't take it with you. You can't. And so how does God want you to use your cookies today? You can sit and go, but they're my cookies. And that's your attitude. You'll be aggravated and irritated and selfish and self-centered and frustrated all the time. But if you say, God, here's what you've given me. Show me how to use. Show me how to be wise. By the way, that word shrewd. Lord, how can I be wise with what you've given me? And so what does God want you to do? Here's the first question. Do you have a budget, a plan for your money? Why do I say that? Because you need to be shrewd with what you've been given. You know, money has an eagle on it, right? You know that, right? And there's a comedian that says the reason for that is because it flies away. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I've had people tell me I only get $100 bills from the bank. And I said, why do you only get $100 bills? Because if I get a 20 I don't even know where it went. But with 100 I notice more. I'm like, okay. As a church, did you know that we give 10% of our money away to other ministries, other churches, to missions, to other places? We do missions around the world together. There are three churches that we sponsor, two here in Brevard, one in Sebastian that are doing great work together that couldn't make it without that little bit of extra that helps them. But Eric, if you kept that money, you could hire another staff member. Yeah, we could. If you kept that, then you could do this little thing. Yeah, but what does God want us to do? And so before we even do any of the other things, we say, how can we invest in other people. I want to encourage you when you look at your budget, your first question, God, how does God want me to invest with what he's given me? Number two, we are stewards of God's resources. Now, I want to read something that is often quoted the wrong way. And I'm going to say it first the wrong way and see if you can catch how I said it wrong. Money is the root of all evil. Did you know that's wrong? The love of money is the root of evil. Why? How do I know that? Because money is neutral. Did you know money is neutral? I know it doesn't seem like it, 
But the truth is, money is neutral. What do I mean? Money can be used for something good. I hope you've had somebody bless you at some point in your life. Years ago, I used to work at Quincy's. My fellow Quincy waitress is not here this morning. We worked together 35 years ago. She still remembers me, which is scary. And so I used to wait tables, and most of the people I waited tables with, a lot of them were single moms. And I knew they were single moms trying to raise kids, making a way in the world today, took everything you got. And so they were working hard for the money. And uh, anyway, so, so I remember waiting tables with them. And, and listen, when someone would leave a good tip, it was crazy. I remember churches on Sunday coming in, and the waitresses would describe them this way. Oh, that's a good church. Oh, that's not a good church. Do you know what they meant by that? And so what I started doing not long after I left Quincy's is every year around my birthday, I would set aside $50, which was a lot, especially early on. That was a lot, a lot, a lot. And I would set aside $50, and then I would take my kids, you ready for this, to the cheapest restaurant we could afford. So typically, we'd go to Cracker Barrel, and here were the rules. You cannot order drinks, and you have to order a kid's meal. Oh, we got out of there for like 25 bucks every time. We could go to Steak and Shake, same rule, no drinks. You got to order. Back then it was the $3.99 menu, I think, maybe $4.99. You get out of there cheap, right? And I'll never forget one time I left a $50 tip. My meal was probably $30. Left a $50 tip and left. And as I walked out the door, the waitress came running out crying and said these words, how did you know today was my 50th birthday and I had to work? I said, I didn't know. But every year I've gone out of my way to do that because I remember what it was like, what it felt like when somebody went out of their way to give, to bless me, to take one of their cookies and give it to me. And all of a sudden, I felt blessed. And I want to encourage you, you can bless people the same way. Listen to what Jesus continues. He goes from that story that, we, that most of us aren't familiar at all with. We're still kind of sitting there going, I'm not sure pastor should have talked about that. That's... He goes from that to this, and I bet you a nickel you've heard these next two things. And I don't know why I'm betting the sermon on money. Here we go. <laughs> Seems wrong, doesn't it? Seem wrong? Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Time out. By the way, this is, this is a principle in hiring contractors for your house. Do they call you back? Do they, when you give them a small job, do they follow through with it? Don't give somebody $1,000 that didn't handle the $100 well. I'm just saying. Okay, and then it continues. Whoever's dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. Well, pastor, if I win the lottery, I'm going to give it, give it, I'll give 20% to the church. No, not if you don't now. Do you know the more money you have, the harder it is to give more? People don't know that, right? Because they haven't made more yet. So be faithful with the little that you have. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? What is Jesus saying here? That God's paying attention to how you use all that you've been given. Are you faithful with the time God's given you? Are you faithful with the money God's given you? Just look and evaluate him. Again, Dave Ramsey has some great studies on budgeting. And listen, if you don't have a budget, you ready for this? You can Google Dave Ramsey budget, and he has a free mini budget online that you can print, and it'll take you about 15 minutes to fill it out. It's not detailed, but it gives you an idea. Because some of us have no idea where our money goes. We just know we had it, and then we lost it. I remember my dad owned a construction company, and he had guys who wanted to get paid uh, cash on Fridays. This is way back. They wanted cash on Fridays. By Monday, they didn't know where their money was. And by Monday, sometimes we didn't know where they were. This was a construction site. There's more absences on Monday mornings, it seemed like. I'll never forget, I had a friend who was a multimillionaire, good friend, multimillionaire. Helped all kind of ministries, was faithful, did all kind of stuff for people. 
and he made some bad investments and lost everything. And I remember going to lunch with him after, and I said, I'll buy lunch. I said, you know, like, he'd always bought lunch because he wanted to. And I'm like, no, 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 let me buy lunch. And I took him to lunch, and I remember sitting down, and he looked at me and said, Eric, I want you to know, I'm giving exactly like I gave before. I go, you can't afford to give like you gave. He goes, no, 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 I don't mean amount. I mean percentage. I'm giving the same percentage I gave before. And you know what's amazing? I can tell you this is absolutely true. He became a multimillionaire again and was able to bless all those people again. Now, even if he hadn't, guess what? He was just as happy. And yet God blessed him again. If you're faithful with little, God says, I'll bless you. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean if you're faithful with $100, God's going to give you another 100 Please don't be a TV preacher. I'll never forget going to a church where the guy said, the guy said, one night I put my, my old Timex watch in the offering plate. And when it got to the back, I had a Rolex watch. So, so let me tell you what I call that. No, that's true. I heard that. I heard that several times. What's really funny about it is that guy went town to town and told that same story. You know why? Because he was trying to manipulate people. So don't give because of a pastor. By the way, just so you know, okay, I don't know what you give. So, so please don't do what this lady, and I don't want to know what you give. Please don't do what this lady did years ago when I did a sermon on money. She came up to me after the service and said, Pastor, you just did that sermon because you know I don't give anything here. To which I said, I didn't know you didn't give. She said, what? I said, I don't look at what people give at our church. She turned white as a sheet. <laughs> came up to me two weeks later. Pastor, I want you to know I've started giving now. I said, oh, that's great. That's great. That's been, that's been almost 30 years ago. That's funny. So let me ask you this question. Do your resources reflect eternal priorities? And by the way, it may not be, it may not be money. This happened a couple years ago here where somebody called me or messaged me, I think, or maybe texted me, and they said, Eric, we've got a washer and dryer, and, and, and we just want to know, is there somebody? We got a new one, and we wanted to know if we can give this away to somebody. And it probably wasn't a few hours later. Somebody texted me and said, hey, we don't have a washer and dryer. Do you know anybody who has one? And so I said no, and I bought the one from the other person and sold it. No, I didn't do that. And I, I put them, and here's what's awesome. The person who had the washer and dryer, you ready for this? They delivered it for free to the other person. That was the most amazing part of the story to me. What'd they do? They knew God had given them something, and they said, God's given me this. What am I supposed to do with it? And they gave it away. What does God want you to do with what you've been given just look and say, God, I just want to be faithful. I want to reflect what you care about. Randy Alcorn said this, Abundance isn't God's provision for me to live in luxury. By the way, in America, we worship comfort and leisure, right? Comfort and entertainment, right? And so now we, now we, have, now we have lazy boy chairs in the theater because we quit going. Because we're like, home's more comfortable. And they're like, we'll fix that. And we'll make the popcorn where you can't make it this good, right? Somebody told me I went to the theater the other day. They spent 60 bucks on two of them. I went, <gasps> wow, how good was the popcorn? It's his provision for me to help others live. God entrusts me with his money, not to build my kingdom on earth, but to build his kingdom in heaven. Finally, number three, God knows what or who you serve. Jesus then continues with this, and I'm sure you've heard this one. No one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. The Pharisees, that's the religious leaders who loved money, heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. Now that's a little, you know, we're less obvious than that. I mean, if you're in church today and you hate this sermon and you're thinking, why is pastor talking about it? You're probably not looking at me going, but they were. He said to them, you're the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. So here's the good news. God knows your heart. Here's the bad news. God knows your heart. I don't know your heart. I don't know what you give. I don't care. I, I, I mean, I don't mean to be mean. I, it, it doesn't bother me either way. You give what God's put on your heart, but he knows. And I don't. First John says this, Don't love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love of the Father's not in them. 
For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. If you want to find joy in your life, listen, give some cookies away. Did you hear me? If you want to find some joy in life, recognize they weren't your cookies anyway. And so say, God, do you want me to give some cookies away? And then pray about to who and to when and how to do it. But when you do it, if you do it with the right heart, God blesses a cheerful giver. He can't have a cookie yet, can he? I'd give it to him. Here's your final question. Is God first place in your life? One last story for you. Oh, he's fine. I don't care. I'm Mr. Logistics. I love when we go somewhere, we got to get in, we got to get out. I know where to park. If we go to a, a place over at the Amway Center, I know the best seats to get out when we're done. I know the best parking, and we're going to run to it to get you out of that building before all those other people block us. Right? And if I'm not careful, I will be the progressive commercial. Where before we've even gone in, I'm already saying, well, it's a good thing we parked out here. We can leave quick. Oh, uh, you're not supposed to be talking about that yet. By the way, I am almost every progressive commercial about your, your parents now. Now, here's the worst part. We were at Disney World a few years ago, and I'll never forget, we were sitting there watching a show, and I could hear the family behind me arguing. And all I could think was, you could argue at home for free. But I've gone on vacation with my family where the goal is to care about and love each other and I find myself aggravated because they're not hurrying enough for me. Do you see where I miss it? I now can go to Disney World and go, we got to go! They're going to do the fireworks soon and we will never get out of here! Go, 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 go! And suddenly my focus becomes getting somewhere instead of being with people. Don't ever forget, God did not give you money just so you could hoard it and be miserable. He gave it to you so that you can be a blessing and so that you can be blessed. So quit worrying so much and start saying, God, how do you want me to use it? And you'll find joy again. And that's what I really want. I just want you to find joy in what God's given you. He's created all things to bring you joy. So let it bring you joy. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian after the service, so you can come up to me after. We're going to have our time of giving now. You just give what God's put on your heart. God loves a cheerful giver. I don't know what that means about a grumpy giver, but you don't need to give if you're grumpy. <laughs> Let's close in prayer. Father, thanks for each one here. I thank you that we can give to you, but I thank you that you've given all to us. Lord, I thank you for all the cookies you've given us, whether it's time or money or people in our lives, and we're grateful. So, Lord, help us to be grateful instead of grumpy. Lord, help us to recognize what you've given so we can enjoy it and so that we can enjoy the time you've given us too. Bless each one today with your love and your peace today. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a great song to close our service. I'll